So our next speaker, uh, Namarata Hazarika. Uh, oh, she's here. Not in, in Zoom. In Zoom. Okay. So uh, Narata Azarika is a first-year PhD student in the Department of Humanities and Social Science in Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Uh, her area of research interest includes uh, uh, restorative justice, indigenous justice, identity politics, religious institutions, uh, primarily focusing on neo-Vashinavism. Uh, and a debate on the public sphere. She received the PM uh, Yuva Mentorship uh, Shem Scholarship India in 2021 and published a book titled uh, Stress in Transition, Going Beyond Spirituality and Challenging British Rule under uh, the publication of National uh, Book Trust of India in January um, um, 223 so uh, please thank you miss am i audible we hear you but not so well yeah i'll Try to be a little bit louder. Am I audible now? Uh, one second. I want to see if uh, the problem is here. Can you can you speak for a second? Hi. Do you hear? Yeah. Okay. So I'll uh, thank you, Ms. Gav, for the. Uh, introduction and also I would like to thank the steering committee for organizing such a wonderful conference. I would like to share my screen if I may. Yeah. Yeah you may you can you can share. Okay. Just not taking. It is actually not allowing me to. So the title of my paper is The Emotional Logic of Female Suicide Bombing. The paper seeks to analyze the gendered understanding of the phenomena of female suicide bombing and by employing the psychological and cognitive categories of emotions, it tries to explain that this phenomena needs to be viewed beyond its gendered understanding that holds a very real political rationale for statecraft. Most of the Western literature fails to focus on the question of agency of the body linking them to larger categories of culture, religion, and homeland all together and all at once. So while these are very valid underpinnings, when discussing female suicide bombing, this category is called prey to the patriarchal and oriental biases. As such, the body in question uh, or the body in focus fails to stand out independently on, of the patriarchal base and get stuck in a loop of subordination in relation to its male counterparts that has been produced and reproduced by the nexus of state, media, market, and the society around in general. So the paper seeks uh, to use the psychological and cognitive theories such as appraisal theory, uh, social identity, and self-categorization theory uh, to understand the social, political, and environment determinants that seeks to explain female suicide bombing. Additionally, it moves beyond the gendered understanding of looking at the phenomena of female suicide bombing and perceive its operationalization as a predominantly political one. Uh, the paper is at a preliminary stage and is based on secondary readings of literature. I have not carried any empirical work so far concerning the topic. 
so i will just start with the first like basic question like why suicide bombing a uh, tool kit most often used by non state actors suicide bombing is one of the most impactful attack in modern warfare Horowitz defines suicide bombing as attacks in which the bomber sacrifices themselves as a means to an end. The idea of sacrificing one's body for a cause leaves a deep impact not only because of the extent to which the individual is willing to go, but also because of its after effects. Insurgent groups are using suicide bombing more and more because it is more effective than traditional methods such as uh, guerrilla warfare and. Uh, Suicide bombing, especially when done by women and girls, tend to get a lot of attention from media, both at home and abroad. Also, contrary to what most people think, they are not. Namarata, Namarata, sorry to disturb. Can you uh, speak, please, louder and a little bit slower? A little bit. If you will need more time, no problem. Just we we, oh, yes. we would like to understand everything that you say. Oh yeah. So I was saying that insurgent groups are using suicide bombing nowadays more and more because it is more effective than traditional methods uh, such as guerrilla warfare. And suicide bombing, when especially done by women and girls, gets a lot of media attention from home and abroad. Also, contrary to what most people think, they are not unbalanced, self-destructive sociopaths. Most of them are also not poor, uneducated religious extremists. For example, uh, Robert Pape from University of Chicago says, the profile of a suicide terrorist is more like that of a politically aware person who might join a grassroots movement than that of a stereotypical murderer, religious cult member, or everyday suicide. I hope I'm uh, like uh, audible now, much better. So many of the suicide bombers carry with them generational traumas and they did right from their childhood as explained by Ayad Al-Saraj, founder and director of Gaza Community Mental Health Program. Also, self-sacrificing people are more likely to become suicide bombers in societies that praise them for it. Uh, Ma uh, Mangalika Silva, coordinator of Women for Peace in Colombo, Sri Lanka says, the self-sacrifice of the female bomber is almost an extension of the Tamil idea of motherhood. So what makes the acts more hostile and uh, condemn are its aging, the women, who under the uh, cover of pregnancy or what we think as innocence, sneak into attack, making us feel less safe. Given the gender dimension of violence, it has a negative impact on social psychology. Such acts have thwarted the traditional separation of women, women uh, confining to the private sphere and not being able to or not being an active agent in the public. causing a sense of moral panic among heteronormative state institutions. However, uh, or as you can see in the graphs, like uh, since 2001, there has been a consistent rise of female suicide bombers uh, in parts of Central Asia, Eastern Europe and Middle East. But none of the major academic themes of the last 10 years, such as focusing on control, conquest or religious ideology, appear to properly explain why these violent non-state actors employ suicide bombing as one of their weapons of violence. This lack of unanimity is common when developing a research program because information accumulates over time. So moving on to the uh, next slide, I will not go or go into the definition of the theories that I have taken given the limited time I have, but I would like to uh, discuss their position in my paper. So according to Hoffman, The purpose of terrorism is to undermine public faith in the ability of the government to protect and defend civilians. So, generating a climate of fear and intimidating susceptible to terrorist exploitation. Suicide bombers can make a significant impact with relatively less resources at their disposal. The new industry thrives on this excitement of a spectacular demise. There is a global audience for suicide terrorism and the local community is crippled by fear and worry. to the point where space appear, uh, itself seems to be contracting. So human beings and their actions are highly influenced by the environment they are in and the relationship they share with other members of the community. It is through such associations that they draw notion of shame, honor, revenge, guilt, humiliation. 
the habitus that Volio speaks about in 1977 provides for a context in which actions and reactions are performed, perceived, and integrated. Violence is a serious uh, external demand that has an impact not only on the victims, but the ones who have committed it, both uh, like sociologically, materially, and psychologically. Because violence, by definition, is an intentional effort at uh, physical harm, and therefore has moral and social implications. So understanding the true motivation of the female suicide bombers who decide to train for a bombing is, of course, extremely challenging. So whatever information we have, it is about these women. It comes from the interviews with friends, families, and trainers, and also the video recording that they have left behind. Individuals uh, draw immediate cognizance from members of the same group. Their actions are guided by group norms and demand a certain degree of allegiance. The social identity theory uh, gave immense significance to group identities and mobilization and social change. However, it didn't say much about the power dynamics that operates within these group relations. So in order to do this, uh, I took a third theory, that is the self-categorization, that looks at a different level of identification without breaking up the continuum between groups. Intergroup emotion make people show a lot of hostility or affection for people in other groups or in their own. The study of intergroup emotion can show how people thought about social relationships. This is because it is based on self-categorization and identification. The historical roots of imperialist forces uh, and the humiliation they cause left scars on the public mind that sometimes uh, drove people to pick up weapons. So study shows that giving up one's body as a way to reclaim what is just and honorable is not because of irration, beliefs and uh, thought processes, but uh, because of deep-seated humiliation and shame and a desire to claim, or in this case, reclaim what is fair and right. So, uh, moving ahead, uh, since I have talked about uh, how emotional factors work in forming relations, group relations, intergroup and outgroup relations, I would like to broaden the discussion by bringing in other factors. So, women are clearly only uh, comprehended in terms of how they can be indoctrinated, coerced, exploited, and trickled by male organized groups through a reading of grief. Despair, humiliation, violation, post traumatic stress, anger, and uh, loss. According to uh, McClinton's lucid analysis, women are reduced to a designated agency, which is an exclusive agency that operates by indi uh, invitation only, thereby becoming mere weapons of the male arsenal. The subjective understanding of the objective reality that is highly patriarchal and orientalist takes away from the women their agency to make a rational choice concerning their own body. Numerous scholars from the Western Hemisphere have been driven by uh, liberal feminist principles as evidenced in the works of Victor 2003, Davis 2003, Bloom 2005, Stein 2006 to repeatedly underscore the gendered interpretation of the phenomena. They have attempted to distinguish the personal from the political and have demonstrated the persistent Western bias in interpreting third world forms of agency. Moreover, literature portrays female suicide bombers as a distinct and unprecedented occurrence, distinct from comparable instances of political violence in Western history and modern times. Uh, the texts frequently exhibit a limited conceptualization of gender with a discourse surrounding religion predominantly centering on Islam and the concept of race being employed interchangeably with statements pertaining to religion. It positioned women who engage in political violence as perpetrators within an implicit discourse that sets uh, Western emancipation in opposition to the essentialized and uh, orientalized Muslim or Arab women. This leads us to categorically look into the power relations uh, at the structural and the systematic level. For instance, Talal Assad, in his work has contended that while there is no definitive and unequivocal response, religious rationals continue to be preferred. Why? It is due to the fact that such rationals offers a framework that merge uh, psychological components and cultural markers together. This framework is amenable to the language of safeguarding civilization from savagery. So this lead us to the, uh, lead us to the questions of autonomy, agency, care and a deconstructive notion of gendered power structure. The acknowledgement of bodily autonomy and agency for all people 
regardless of gender go against the realist view of statecraft which frequently views human beings as tools for power and control feminist analysis challenges the conventional gendered power structure that influences statecraft realists frequently ignore the gender dynamics within nations and how they influence policy in favor of emphasizing the nation state as the main actor in international relations feminist stress the necessity of dismantling these gendered power structure addressing gender disparities and advancing gender mainstreaming in the development and implementation of policies so as such the operationalization of care and care politics needs to be reviewed there is a pertinent difference at looking at the concept when delivered by men as opposed to women so in the first case it is viewed or perceived from the lens of protection and in the case of the latter in terms of nurture and reproduction so this initial understanding sets the tone for successive underprivilege of women in regards to owning to their body and bodily decisions uh coming to the next slide i would like to uh, discuss uh the reasoning behind this gendered logic i mean there is a uh, gender profiling politics of hierarchy peripheral role of female environmental factors identity crisis and there is aspects of aspiration fear and the outlook so gender profiling is a phenomena that involves the formation of assumptions or evaluations about individuals based on their gender gender based stereotyping is the act of attributing specific traits societal roles or performance expectations to individuals based solely on their gender without taking into account their unique abilities competencies or personal preferences the action uh, has the potential to diminish the independence of individuals and overlook the wide ranging abilities and aptitude that they possess societal limitations imposed by gender categorization result in a failure to acknowledge the uh, complete capabilities and valuable <laughs> contributions of individuals regardless of their gender so the phenomena uh, coming to the next the uh, phenomena of hierarchy in politics frequently entails a uh, asymmetrical allocation of power resources and opportunity whereby individuals occupy higher position in the hierarchy enjoy advantages at the cost of those situated at the lower ones the phenomena may lead to disparities in social and political status exclusion from mainstream society and a uh, prejudicial treatment the relegation of women to peripheral role is indicative of entrenched gender biases and power imbalances gender based discrimination can take on diverse forms including but not limited to uh, impeding women's education opportunity marginalizing them from participating in decision making processes or designating them with a uh, predominantly uh, domestic or caregiving duties environmental factors may include a uh, social and cultural uh, dimensions such as social economic status availability of healthcare and education the existence of supportive social networks the factors possess the potential to exert a substantial uh, influence on the well-being of individuals and society at large while also contributing to the formation of opportunities and challenges the interconnection between individuals motivation choices and overall well-being is closely linked to their aspiration fear and outlook so the presence of aspiration can serve as a motivating factor uh, but conversely fear can impede progress and restrict those developments the process of exploring and defining one's self is a natural aspect of personal development however this can result in an identity crisis as the imposition of inflexible and stringent societal standards and anticipation possess inherent difficulties so coming to the last slide I would uh, like to read one paragraph from Dorit Naman's written work uh, titled "Rights of Palestinian Palestine: Angels of Death, Media, Gender, and Performance in the Case of Palestinian Female Suicide Bombers." I quote: "Regardless of the narrative, the women try to communicate in their actions and videos. The dominant narrative in the Arab public sphere." tied these women to the heteronormative narratives as mothers and brides narrative that affirm the gender status quo whether discussing mythic brides or monster the discourse in both the arab and uh, the west generally avoids uncomfortable questions of subjectivity agency and aggression all qualities that are not benefiting women according to the patriarchal norms so moving forward to see the phenomena from a political lens is crucial as that would give an understanding of the positionality of women with the structural paradigm of violence 
that would hold the potential to look at these actions and reactions from the gendered lens. The purpose of bringing the emotion logic is to evoke the biases that exist within the literature concerning emotional variables regarding women and their issues. The idea of care, nurture, and reproduction are so inherent in the feminist or Western literature that they equally missed the point of looking at the phenomena from a uh, realist lens of statecraft. While suicide attacks have been observed throughout human history, it is only in recent times that the involvement of women as suicide bombers has garnered significant attention from the global media. The prevalence and tactics of female suicide bombing are not significantly distinct from the male uh, counterparts. However, the female variant of this phenomena has elicited a more pronounced sense of apprehension. Uh, while male suicide bombings are typically portrayed as gender neutral and associated with extreme tactics of warfare, female suicide bombings are often depicted in gender terms and elicit a necessity for a more pronounced comprehension of how women not only participate in militant action but also choose to sacrifice their lives for it. Moreover, the rationale behind this phenomena is explicated in terms of individual incentive rather than uh, political ones frequently reaffirming patriarchal and orientalist tendencies. Hence, for the purpose of this paper and the conference, I am trying to invoke the emotion logic of female suicide bombing to break the gendered bar barrier of looking at the phenomena and explore the possibilities of understanding political, social, and environmental factors related to psychology and cognition from a rational standpoint. So emotion, I just would like to conclude that emotion reflects a constantly changing person uh, environment relationship. Uh, similarly, the essence of a modern warfare is embedded in the structure of society uh, that and produces bodies that are meticulously motivated by varied emotions. As such, the body of female suicide bombers become a site that needs to be evaluated from both the social and cultural settings. What motivates them uh, to pull the trigger? Are they in a state of ecstasy or uh, full consciousness? Do they actually believe that there is any justness in their work? So the appraisal theory focuses on meaning making as a central act of human uh, agency. And the comprehensive nature of the theory provides for a holistic understanding of behaviors and motivations. Thank you.